Zero. All right, so we'll come back to number one when Brent arrives. So let's move down to number two, bioremediation service agreement. So we have a service agreement with Tervita. They're the people that um, are looking after a contaminated soil site at our waste disposal grounds. We give them space. They basically do all the work. We get a few dollars out of it every year. Um, they make sure that it's accepted materials that go in there. It's a good service to our area. They bring the land back to its original state once the agreement is over. We see no reason why we wouldn't continue with this agreement. Costs us nothing, a little bit of money, good service. Do we charge enough? Um, compared to other areas and considering they have to remediate, they were content with this. Yeah? Yeah. Some years are better than others, so it depends on how much stuff goes into the site. All right, anybody got any questions, comments? This is that area of the garbage dump, right? Yeah. yeah, when you go to the right. To the right. Behind the shack. Just out of curiosity, if that wasn't being used, could we use that for the landfill? I think anywhere in there you would have to get approval for extending your landfill. Yeah. And if we ever need it for that, we just cancel the agreement to bring it back to the original state. It's still ours. Thank you. So we would require a resolution. Okay. Okay, the lagoon upgrade. Uh. So at the last meeting, I understand that council went through this or you had a, a yes. presentation done. Yes. So we would require resolution for engineering to look at the second opinion, which was basically looking at the MMBR technology and consider this as a pilot, <coughs> stud or pilot study. Um, I know there was some issues brought forward as it related to numbers, so maybe we could get some more clarification on that. I know the numbers that were used in the report um, Dylan consultant had some question about about so in order for us to move forward with this we would require a resolution just so we can pass this on to water services board and the resolution would say that this is the that we, we want to look into this because this is some new ground for water services board also right okay and with this is this when we ask them for their share of the grant right now we're just asking them will you consider this as part of the grant I thought Salmon was going to call them to see if they were. He had the yeah, emails that's oh, why okay. we need the resolution. Right. Okay, even yeah, before to they... proceed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They are aware of it. They are aware that this was uh, one of the things then that we preferred that over the solver system. Okay. Okay. So resolution next yeah. meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Parking at the gym, corner of Laughlin and City. So, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this area. This was the old uh, grocery store. I can't remember what it was called. Um, Food Dump. Smith Town. Smith. 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 Apparently, it's changed out a few times. Yeah. Okay. So, it's now converted into a gym. Um, it's a nice, quiet area there. And I don't know why. Maybe back in the day, their parking was no parking in that whole area leading up to the, the gym area. So this is on the east side of Sati we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yes, I think which, yes. Okay. I see no reason for it to still be a no parking area. What they're doing now is it pushes the parking on Lathlin. And when you come to the corner of Lathlin to turn left or right, when you have to pull right up to the corner, if there's someone parked there, the visibility is very poor. So when this concern was brought to my attention, I had asked the, the owner of the gym to take some pictures and kind of prove his case and pointed out like some of those things. And we believe that there's no reason for that to uh, continue with the no parking. Other we believe it would be much safer to permit it. There's a private driveway there too, right? Yeah. But we um, have that all over the town. Sense. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what we're saying then is we would allow him to park yeah. up to the yellow? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is what we're saying? Yeah. Which is... It's, it's basically you maybe two spots, that's all it is. Yeah. But really, it's much much more sense <laughs> and much safer for people to be parking in that area versus on Lachlan. Like yeah. I said, when you pull Makes up sense. there, you can't see. It's a. It's definitely an issue. Have you talked to Jeff? Is he He'd be quite p pleased with that. So he's good with that? Yeah. So the parking, like, in the picture there isn't any grass there. So parking would actually be on the street and not not on the curb, curb. no. Not on the boulevard. Correct. That's yeah. Seeing right now that it's no parking through that whole area, and again, there's a couple of spots there that there's no reason why they couldn't park. 
Maybe back when it was a grocery store, it was for more delivery. I'm not quite sure. And engineering also didn't have a problem with uh, permitting this, this to be a parking area too. It's still going to be the normal setback from the intersection where the yellow line is. Mm -hmm. In the winter time, this, this is not one comment I do have in regards to this is in the winter time, this street is extremely congested. Um, I used to drive south on this street every year for many, many, many years to get to work in the morning after I dropped my kids off at the high school. And when a school bus was coming down that way, there was only room for the school bus. So when the school bus was driving north, I needed to go over and park if there was room to park on the west side of city. It's just in the wintertime it gets congested, but <coughs> okay. it's just just a thought of it too. So keep the snow clean. Yeah. Okay, everybody's good with that? So we can proceed with amending the bylaw to permit that? Yeah. Good. Everybody's good, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. MWSB annual project funding request. So each year we put in a, like our, basically our long-term capital infrastructure plan to Manitoba Water <coughs> Services Board. In the past it used to be by resolution. Um, now it's not required by resolution, but we wanted to bring it to council so that council is aware of our priorities. Um, with one being Lagoon Upgrade, Bignell Renewal, Bagshaw Renewal, Reader Renewal, and Centennial Drive Watering. So those are what we're going to be putting in. How, uh, how, how likely are we to get these? Um, all at one time, not. But I think our Lagoon upgrade, there is a good possibility of that happening. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it, I think we're going to have to be looking at a lot of the money on our own or else budgeting with other, with other dollars. Some of this we probably can um, maybe mix with uh, the other reserve funds that we have. Um, I noticed J.R. Cousins has been the engineer in all of them. Do we tender all of this, or how do they become the engineer? We generally, if we're doing any of this kind of stuff, tender it out. We tender it yeah. out. Yeah. And they're always the lowest tender? Most times, yeah. Oh, really? Huh. Okay. And I think a lot of it is because they do a lot of work up here also. Okay. So, so the streets we're looking at are... Uh, Bignall, Bagshaw, <coughs> Reader, and Centennial Drive, Waterman. Yep. Your Bignall is going to be your service lines. That's going to be a huge one underneath, like your uh, water and sewer, because they go back to some of the originals. Yeah, that's our main one. Yeah. yeah. And Bagshaw and Reader, again, that's, that's more of your lines again underneath. But there's going to be the infrastructure on top, too, because we're going to strip everything down. But there's nothing to say that if we apply for the money, for sure, as you it, can it, get it could yeah. come, yeah. <coughs> but what they do is Manitoba Water Services Board does do a lot of cost sharing, so they want to see all across the province who's got what on the go, yeah. so that yeah. they can do their long-term planning. Also, that's understandable. Cool. Good. So the difference, and maybe I could maybe Simon have this a better answer for this, but. I've never really seen the full grant that they do for roads when they're looking for the the, the grant application for the roads, and I heard I hear it's kind of kind of comprehensive. It, this is this is like this is all you need for. It's just telling them what your plans are going to okay, be. Okay, so I guess what I'm getting yeah. at is that so will they say, hey, we've selected this. Do you have the the backup package for it? Or yeah. the, Probably not or the what? whole engineered packages of it. Okay. All right. This well, is just our plan, so we would okay. still, in cash. most cases, we'd still have to go through and. Okay. Yeah. I can confirm that with Sam. Yeah, no, I just kind of wonder. I just kind of seems kind of. Because yeah. a lot of the yeah. times, what you would do is you wouldn't necessarily have that report sitting here because you could be sitting on it for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So it would have to be like when it comes to yeah. the renewal, the lagoon is the one we have current. Yeah. Big note, there might have been a report from 15 years ago. Yeah. I, I just but know that some of the frustrations from staff would be and they'd be reluctant because they're going to put all this work in to fill out this grant application. Meanwhile, we probably don't really have any money to do anything, but we're going to do all the work to go do it. And again, I've never looked through all that. So I just kind of 
I mean, this is better because you're just kind of saying maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't. This is in a perfect spending. world if we had the cash. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And again, to give Water Services Board the heads up saying, we're right. going to be coming back after you, like, okay. or to anybody for funding. Yes. Okay. Brent, I understand us here. Oh, is Brent here? Okay, well, let's, let's meet with Brent. If you go back to the request thing, like two nope. steps further, yeah. and it shows our priority one, two, three, four, five type thing. Yeah, like this, you mean? Yeah. 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 No, what I mean, I just was. I got it. Look through all the ones it's that they're going to make a wish list. But yeah. you throw up there and say this is where we're proposing to go. Yeah. Evening. Hey. Evening. How are you? Bring yourself. Good. Good. Nice weather. Yeah. <coughs> Good for your business. Yeah, actually. Yes or no? But hasn't been too bad, been too bad lately. So <coughs> let's bring in a change. So start. Sure, please. Okay. So I have. Uh, our annual performance plan, which I believe some of you are familiar with or have heard in past years from maybe Brent Matice or other uh, staff sergeants before or other NCOs from the RCMP. So what it is is uh, our fiscal year is April 1 to March 31st. And at the detachment, we have to come up with an annual performance plan on what we're going to target, what objectives, and how we're going to reach those objectives. So um, kind of working with my scan group that we started, we kind of identified what the community wants to achieve or work towards or where the hot topics are and what the police should be focusing on and that they didn't make them but it was considered and what we had as priorities that the division and the district sent down to us we kind of just merge them into three so we've come up with and a couple of them are pretty much the same as last year one is a little bit different so crime reduction uh, that's reduced the threat and impact of serious and organized crime Second one is road safety. That's uh, making Manitoba roads safer through enforcement and education. And then the third is indigenous and vulnerable communities. And that's support and assist each other through education. And that's got a that's got a youth component in it as well. So that was kind of the three that um, I'm bringing forward here to consult with the Ta the Pa uh, Town Council. And this this consultation has to be a, a signature has to be with every ERM or community that we police just so that they're aware of what we're trying to achieve through the year. So I don't know if you have any questions regarding that. that I can, if you want more information on each one too, I can break it down more. Sorry? What was the third one? The third one was in Indigenous and Vulnerable Communities. And Vulnerable. Yeah, vulnerable. and that's support and assisting each other through education and like I said, there's a youth component on that as well. Um, like if you just wonder even for more like so crime reduction that's reducing the threat and impact of serious and organized crime so what we try to do there is we try to aim for so many warrants on uh, search warrants and uh, executed on certain residences or businesses and we try to hit a certain number of those uh, uh, prolific offenders so what they are is our guys that we deal with all the time we kind of pick the target ones that we want to keep heat on all the time so they're on many conditions in town so we have two guys that are primarily always in plain clothes, and they're out doing condition checks. So they're looking for if they're following curfew, A, we'll know if they're reporting or not, but curfew, um, substance, if they're drinking or under the influence of anything, we'll go check. Because a lot of these guys have to present themselves at the door. If they don't, then it's a breach. And then what we're trying to do there is we gauge success by how many, <coughs> how many we've opened at the start and how many we close. So if we close one it's successful we either back to jail not that that's always the answer but that's one alternative or the person's moved on out of the community which is good for everybody or passed away or something right so then we when that we consider that closed and then we just bump someone up that's in the next year to go up to replace them so there's always x numbers always being tracked and what that does is it has a hopefully somewhat a positive effect that is not out there reoccurring more crime bringing others into crime with them and or drug supplying, whatever that the person's into, right? Trying to curb it. So that's kind of what that is for, for that breakdown. The road safety, we break it down by a uh, number of impaired driving charges. That's either by drug or alcohol. Uh, we, number of moving and non-moving actual traffic charges. That's provincial level. And then the number of check stops that we set up. So we're trying to do those three things to hit on making the road safer. That's in addition to traffic services, what they do daily. They can help us with this, but they have their own uh, enforcement targets. I'm not too sure what those are, how they manage that. But. 
the uh, it's kind yeah. of a little bit on topic, but yeah, no, for sure. Go What's a, like a pilot project with the RCMP? How would one have to be initiated? A pilot project? Yeah. Is that a uh, no? There's there's we're familiar with it, so it usually it starts from what I've seen is that the the det the detachment commander or whoever that was trying to try this would have to come up with like a business plan and kind of say this is so the, the need for it. The only reason why I yeah, ask this sure. is that like all your three components like from one down. Yeah. You know, and you've shown us kind of how much time your guys are spending on kind of the the lower end stuff, right? Yep. So in order to have an impact on the top three, yep. if we, and I, again, I don't know how it happens, had a sure. pilot project where we had other recruits or someone else dealing with the lower end stuff in our downtown area, yep. uh, then we could show that, I don't know, our, our stats are through the roof in terms of dealing with your top three. I, you, know, you know what I'm getting at without having a major impact on the municipality wages wise because it's a pilot project. So then if we're looking at things to do to clean up that area as well, then it's an easy, not easy, but hey, we, if we invest in what works because we've got, and again, I'm just recruits doing some stuff down there downtown. They're getting some training. They're dealing with things that mm -hmm. you don't need to have a seasoned officer dealing with. Uh, there should be dealing with numbers one, two, and three anyway. Oh, okay, I see what you, mean. you know what I mean? Like yeah. It's, I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there. Just an there's, option or something? There's, yeah. Oh. yeah, I don't know, there's, in my work, there's always yeah. a lot of project for this, a lot of project for that, and yeah. if it doesn't work, okay, well, I mean, this one worked, and then someone, then you're, then you're on the hook for it. Yeah. Right? No, At I the know. end of it, for if you want to keep it going. But, yeah. And I'm not saying this has to be entirely you. I'm no, just saying, no, no, no. if there's something that has to be done on the town side, like, I, we can... I don't even mind helping out if it's something that we call or check into and right. come up with something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, no, so I see what you're saying, Trevor. Um, well, really, all this is split because, like, you could have some of the junior guys doing some of it, but then what it is is they're not learning the other component of the job. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of these young recruits or whoever they're coming out, they need to learn the the, the one, two, three objectives before anything else because they need to know how to arrest someone for a parent and investigate it. And yeah, and all the other stuff too. So, oh, for sure. But yeah. whenever, like, I think in the north, we're, we're probably kind of unique. Everyone has to spend so much time, right? Yeah. So instead of spending four years here, you spend one year here, oh. and you do just that kind of stuff, and you go to the next place. I, I, oh, and I mean, okay. I and, see. And, and, and I mean, talking time. For and, and you know what? what? Yeah. Just this, my brain's just yeah. kind of going. Talk about a pilot project. Yeah. Thompson has the exact same kind of issues as we do, yeah. right? And then a lot of other places have the same kind of issues. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just something to. Yeah, throw out there, but no. yeah, that if, if, you're, if you're referring to specifically just a year here, way above me, that would be staffing and yeah. the division. So, or even in saying that, like to go further on what you're referring to, what about the position you had here that wasn't paid by the municipality but wasn't quite an RCMP member that did fill in a lot of those gaps? Like chat. Is it? Yeah, like yeah. that position, maybe having two of those chats. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Because I think that would kind of lean into what you're talking yeah. about. It's not necessarily. An RCMP, but it is dealing with some of our smaller issues and not taking up members' time. Community yeah. Council. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we kind of talked about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess like I would have to make an application to try to have a second for Chad, but I think they're not going to consider a second until they figure out what's Deal going, with the first going one, on. Yeah. See what's going on with him right now, and I don't know when that's going to be solved. But again, I just get the news of the for month. Sure. Like this is where it's at. I don't have a. Time frame, I don't know where it's going to end up either. But, it, you know, once that settles, maybe it's worth looking at a second one. Yeah, maybe we can help that process. Yeah. yeah. Like just, just, in, just in writing it, I mean, I know they have their budget too, but yeah. just in writing it and justifying it in terms of these are members, are, our members are dealing with this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. We're trying to have a real impact on these communities, and it's difficult to do so. Mm -hmm. and, and the municipality is struggling as to try to figure out what the, what our solutions are. I'm not saying that's a solution, no. but we're trying to go through X, Y, yeah. and Z. Everyone's kind of looking to us for answers, yeah. and we don't really, we're like, we don't know. Mm -hmm. So if we were kind of the, what's the worst case scenario? You know, we try something uh, and see if it works, and if it does, then great. But it needs to be more than like a security guard, yeah. but not necessarily a full-on RCMP member who's yeah. Got ten years and fifteen years of service. You, yeah. you know what I mean. We go yeah. from. Yeah. No so idea. anyway, I'll take you off your. your train of thought. There. He wouldn't think that we should put an application in now, even with Chad the way he is, for additional. I 
I just don't. I think it'll just be put on the back burner, right? Because they're going to sit there and say, well, what, why are why are we going to close the second one where you might lose your first, and then how do we even know your first one's going to get filled? Yeah. Like I, I don't think it would hurt, but just how I know the RCMP and such working with it, they're not going to probably even look at B until A is resolved. <clears throat> Like I said, it's, it's possible. Uh, Brent, yeah. somebody had mentioned to me, and, I, and I'm going to get the legal terms wrong, but somebody would mention to me that as part of somebody's probation, um, it could be conditional that they're only here if they have work or something bona fide to do. And if they breach that, they can be incarcerated again. Yeah, possible. Is that is that, sure. a, is that a possible thing? So, yeah, so, to so be if we have all these... Uh, guests in the community who are walking around who yeah. have nothing to do and no reason to be here. Yeah. And if they've been, you know, guests of the province already, could we make it, a, could, the, could we encourage the courts to make it a condition of probation that you're not here unless you've got a real reason? Yeah, most of them, most of the people that you're referring to don't actually have probation orders. They're just that, like substance abuse. They're in and out of the cells because of intoxication. So they're not on a sentence because they've never, that's not their MO, like they don't, most of them I'm saying, there's probably the odd one that does, but most of them aren't your serious crime people. They're just homeless people that are not hitting the bottle, unfortunately. So they're not able to be put under a probation order because they're not charged with anything. The people that you're referring to are, are the people that you probably just don't see most of the time. You see some of them. And I mean, some of you have been here so long and with this community, you probably know a few by name. But uh, those people are on probation orders. And yes, a lot of them have, but they reside here. A lot of them, I don't want to say a lot, but some work here. But some of them would have lengthy, like their probation order that they're on, they'd have A to G of conditions. Yeah. But there, there are some that, you know, if they're in the middle of that, of that, those two groups or the second group, the ones that are charged more often, they have ones that say, yeah, you're not to be in the pod unless it's usually for a work or medical reason. Medical reason. Yeah. The, the ones who are uh, <coughs> public drunkenness and yeah. that, um, can they be charged? Could they end up at the... Yeah, we, uh, we've, we've charged them for uh, like public intoxication and that, but there's no recourse of fine or anything because they have no income. And the, the system will take their, their welfare checks because that's all they have for income. Even though a lot of times, I mean, we can all say where it ends up or where it goes. Yeah. So you can say it's the right way or the wrong way, but they can't touch that. With the, with the, if we spoke to uh, the legal, the judges, right? Mm -hmm. If we spoke to them, and we understand they can't afford to pay a fine. We get it. Right? Yeah, yeah. But if we spoke to them, you know, we'd like you to charge them, and then, uh, in essence, and I don't know, bad's not the right word, but we, we don't want them in the community unless they have a valid reason. Yeah. Would, would the courts work with us on that? No, the, the, the reason being is that it's a provincial charge. There's no criminal charge there uh, for being drunk in a public place or loitering it's all provincial it's all like summary offense ticket yeah so it's a it's a lowest level of our policing and that's it doesn't meet any criminal element unless there's a yeah. song yeah it's all it's, it's a provincial act yeah hmm. okay what about for when they're fighting and stuff like that or walking down the street with open liquor Open liquor is provincial now the fighting the fighting is a, is, a, is criminal but the problem there is what happens is you go there, how, how do you piece together two people that are intoxicated beyond belief That's with no witnesses want to say anything? And at the end of the day, when they do sober up, you, you to, to lay the charge on the other, the other victim has to want to press charges yeah. in the court. Yeah. The minute they say we don't want any charges, it's, it's done. Because the Crown and the police are going to invest tons of time right. into a file. And all of a sudden, the victim's like, well, you can charge me if you want, but I'm not giving a statement. And if it goes to trial, I'm not showing up. And the minute the crown sees that, they're like, "Yeah, we're not leaving the church." Okay. That's what. That's a lot of our. A lot of our yeah, time spent on it. A lot of. A lot of new ones in town, and they're very violent. Yeah. I've got recordings of some fights that I've seen, and yeah. very violent. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Does it need to be an RCMP officer who, with the IPDA stuff, if we had a community constable who worked for the town of the Paw, right? Mm -hmm. Could he deal with IPDA, or is that? Yeah, we could. Oh, you could. Yeah. yeah, but you'd want two, right? We don't. Yeah. Want, we don't want one. Yeah. No, I'd be two. Yeah. So, so having said that, if we were to have community constables, they would have. They wouldn't really work out of your location, would they? Yeah. They. They wouldn't. Well, I mean, it, it could be changed that they don't, but primarily, what I've seen, they do. 
Oh, okay. The one that we have on suspension. No, that, that's so, what I mean. Like if we had uh, the PAW community constable. Okay, so no, no attached to your RCMP kind of thing? Well, no. Okay. But he would still be... Um, Okay, there's the two terms. There's a peace officer, yeah, yeah. and there's a... Well, there could be an uh, enforcement a, officer or a, like a bylaw peace officer. Peace officer who can be under yeah. the province, yeah. and then there's a... can be under the federal. So, okay, one's... Well, we're all peace officers. Anyone that can make an arrest or a peace officer. Yeah, but there's two terminologies there. Is there not? Like, we could hire people and have them as a... A town constable yep. being a peace officer, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So, like, I, I don't know the term, the right. term, terms, but I know what you're saying. So, yeah, you can have someone who is a peace officer but can enforce certain legislation, like he can right. do federal, so criminal code. Yeah. But he can have a make arrests and enforce provincial acts and right. bylaws and yeah. that kind of stuff. Yes, and yeah, if if the town wanted to do that, they'd have to you know look at their own training. I don't know where that would go for that person, and if you want to house them here. Or wherever they work out of, yeah, like that would be up to the town. The town would have to look in the. And if we wanted, could they actually work out of the RCMP building with you? I'm sure if uh, you could know we had a meeting and discussed how we wanted to to make it work, I'm sure it would, because we have victim services, the firearms yeah. officer, we have everything working under that roof. Does does the RCMP offer that type of training? Like if for if we wanted to hire a community constable, do they don't. Well, see, Chad, like Chad's a community constable, but it's a, it's a totally different thing than probably what we're talking yeah. about, eh? Because he has RCMP training except for like a month. And I don't know exactly the details of what he's short, but there's some things Chad can't do that the rest of us can, but he can almost do the same thing. Now, uh, what we're talking about there would be, he would be even a lot less than Chad. It would almost be like a six-week course, or I don't, I don't even know what it is, because he wouldn't carry a firearm. No. no. Right? So I, I, I don't know where that training comes from. I would think that we probably have to talk to a community that hasn't already, like Winter or wherever. Yeah. But it wouldn't be at the RCMP Academy. Wouldn't be no, well, for sure not. Because no. yeah. that's the, the federal training. Yeah. And then that would free you up, or the police officers up to do more yeah. important things. Yeah. They're not doing Ideally. Things. Yeah. <laughs> he has that look in his eye. <laughs> well, no, it, it would, right? In sense. Yeah. It, 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 it would help. But then sometimes you're babysitting too, so. Yeah. Yeah. Of, yeah. That's right. And then the last one there was the Indigenous and Vulnerable Communities. And what that is, is uh, we want to hit so many uh, school based educational visit presentations and uh, school based presentations and community based visits and presentations. So DAR isn't in place anymore. DARE? DARE. No, it hasn't been in place for, I'm going to guess, six, seven, eight years. Okay. It's been a long time. Yeah, they took that right out. They, it was basically the same thing, like we're, we have less resources, so we got to start cutting yeah. some ties. Yeah. So, so in that part, how would you, you would just do an educational thing into the school? Yeah, so what I did was I re, kind of revamped our, because we used to have one liaison officer per school when I got here. And if that member wasn't away, then it felt like that school missed out on having him come in. So instead of sending somebody else, and you get, you know, unfortunately you get someone, oh, why do I have to do it? It's not my school. But how, so what I did was we have a three watch system. So I put a liaison for every school on each watch. So there's now three sharing a school. Okay. So now whatever that, okay, so June 1st, Brent, can we get a presentation on drugs and alcohol and stuff? Okay, who's working that day? Okay, you're doing it. And you just assign them saying prepare for this date and time to be there. Okay. So that's kind of how I'm running yeah. that. Yeah. So we should have, have more success when the schools ask yes to make make it happen. Even when we're busy, you know, that's got to prioritize. So. Any other questions? Are you seeing much meth yet? Uh, there's some, been some seizures, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny, like we know what's out there. And we're, like we got some guys working in the background, like for some you know warrants and undercover stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of information about it, but it's not quite like I'm sure it's here more than I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But from the information we're gathering, it's not as not, sure. not as high as what we're we're thinking it would be compared to a lot of other communities. But it's it's out there. There's no question. About it. Mm -hmm. I was going to tell you too, the uh, first meeting for the OCN change oh, is yes. on the 22nd. 
of May? Yeah. Uh, yes, next week. So I guess, I guess Wednesday. So it's from 9 to noon, I believe, at the Kiki Wacken, is it the Bignal, Bignal Room? So I, I don't know what that is entitled as far as who they need there and stuff. I think it's the first meeting. So I think it, it, um, at this point it's just like the members from that new police service, the chief of council and the RCMB, yeah. just to start saying here's here's the base uh, baselines. This is kind of the time frame we're hitting. This is how we're getting our people, letting us kind of know when to expect us and then set up future meetings. So I think, because I remember the last time you guys had discussed, should the town council be at these meetings or what do you think? I think probably not this one, but I think maybe at the next the next couple down the road, it might be a good thing to have someone there for any questions. Because we'll, like I mentioned, we'll probably have to negotiate a shared services agreement with them. Yeah, likely. Yeah. I know from our from our office too. I like in just the fire and police stuff and all the breakdown. I got to do a memorandum of understanding. It's going to be pretty pretty complex actually. So it's harder think ahead of everything every day you kind of sit there going, yeah, I didn't think about that. So I'm kind of making a little list, but what I might do is call down south when we made the chain and get a copy of theirs just so that we get it all covered. So, anything else? I have a question. Yeah, sure. um, the Bear Clan Patrol, yeah. Yeah. finding tons and tons of needles. Yeah. Are they by chance sharing with any of you where they're finding them? Yeah, I believe so. I've, well, I've, I've heard from, what, what's the mental health uh, Lunch was it on Friday there at the yeah. fire hall, and there was a lady there from the Bear Clan taking pictures and stuff. And yeah. she was actually saying she found Good. some needles, and she was saying yeah there was a couple by, well I think she found them on that side though, and I can't remember where she said one was by the Ross School, Julie Ross School, and then one was a couple places where you're like no geez, and uh, I think on their. I don't know if they have a website or some they pictures do. of where they're showing yeah. them. They yeah. do. Is that right? Yeah. But I need to know if somebody with <coughs> them is actually sharing it with you. Guys. Yeah, she is. Okay. So at, at that setting, but I know on that side, she's talking to Stacy a lot. Okay. And then I think they're getting dropped off in the sharps box. Yes. Yeah. Are they finding more on the reserve than in town? I would say it's comparable. Yeah. I'm not hearing one or the other. What I was hearing was there was more in the pot here found like a month, month and a half back, like a few. And now I'm hearing they're finding a few over there, so I think it's. We should have probably been sharing too, but I know uh, we've had to re redo the way we deal with garbage pickup okay. in the Kelsey Estates Manor because they've been dealing with a lot of needles in that area. Mm -hmm. We were dealing with Manitoba housing on it and also getting help involved, training our employees because our garbage crews are having some issues. Okay. So just yeah. to make you aware of that sure. one, and I understand by the bridge. Okay. Underneath the bridge is another yeah. area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me down by the bridge. Hot spot for that stuff, maybe. Okay. Any other questions for Brent? Anything for us, Brent? Uh, nope. I don't believe so. Quick little one. Yeah, sir. Would you have, uh, if they removed the, the block that goes through the road, goes across through the park over here, would it get patrolled more often? That's the one that goes to yeah. you down under the bridge yeah. and yeah. over by the boat and stuff. Like, like yeah, you're talking straight from the, the XTR gas station street? Yeah, the straight north. down and then you yeah. turn and go down by the park and well, the road is blocked off. I, I can't say for, for sure say it will, but I, I think if you moved it, it would it would help. And I think I'd tell the guys that that's what we're going to do or they're going to do it and we should be going down there. So yeah, I would say okay. it should help for sure. Yeah. I don't know if that would create any other, would create any other problems though. Like I'd consider that first before you say Why? should be good, but what else might do it? Why is it what might public, it do that? It's barricaded so the public doesn't go in there and put yeah. down our fields and. But they're they're going in between the posts and they're yeah, making they're 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 But if you're moving enough for a vehicle, you're going to have a major issue. So oh, yeah. to put it there yeah. in the first place. And that's why I ask is why yeah. was it there to start with, right? It's not by accident. Do you require the mayor to sign that? Please, if you will. Yeah, if you're sure, yeah, you yeah, understand it too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what I'll do is, if we're done or when we're done, we'll rush. I'll leave you the final council letter for the year. Um, that here for you. That's some year-end stats, some resourcing, some budget, all that fun stuff. Appreciate it. All good? Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brent. Take care, everyone. Thanks for having me.
back to the speed sweeping area. Uh, 2.5. 2.5. Oh, okay. Uh, infrastructure and engineering, street sweeping. So the town provides street sweeping service within town limits for highways. Um, 2018 report wasn't detailed mm -hmm. enough to see if we should be asking them for more funding. So we'd like to have a resolution to approve the $5,000. And they've already been instructed, or Sam has already instructed, to keep better records to see if we need to increase for 2020. So we would require a resolution. And that's to provide street sweeping services along the highway. Yeah, it's like, yeah, 10, yeah. 285, 289. A lot of this is in the area by the museum. That's how this all came up because yeah. we were having some major issues with going there continually. You could go there three, four times a day because the semi's coming in mm -hmm. and we're going, hey, this is starting to cost a lot of money. How much an hour do we charge that sweeper on that? Do you know? Do you know? I don't know off the top of it's my head. I can find out. Because even at 100 bucks an hour, that's only 50 hours. I mean, yeah. It's not very much. It's said that they were charging 200 and it was just over 200 bucks an yeah. hour to run the machine. Where did I see that? 215 on the letter. Hours. Department agrees yeah. to assist with funding at a rate of 215 per hour. There you go. That's only 25 hours. 25 hours. 25 hours. That doesn't seem like yeah. enough. I think they've done that already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and that's, we didn't have the stats that we backed up, so that's why. Okay. We're looking at, because if we want to increase it, we need to There's put that. some time on it. Could we put 10 down? Because that's only 50 hours, and for sure we're going to well, do that. And I think if we start keeping better track with it, and you're seeing that you're going to eat up that 5,000 really quick, they said they can't necessarily prove more, but if you go back to them and say, hey, you know what, you've already, you said don't exceed 5,000, but this, we've already spent your money. Yeah, well, and we want the streets clean, eh? So. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's keep an eye on it, but uh, I think that's not enough. Yeah, I would just make sure that when Sam is talking to them or how the letter goes out, just to say, like, we we know we're undercharging as it is right now. Yeah. We don't have our numbers, so basically be prepared for next year that we'll have a firmer grip on it and uh, going forward expect a kind of a higher, higher drive. And it's not fair, especially if we get two really good years. For sure. Mm -hmm. And, the, and, for and the, the street looks good right now. It's nice and clean, so yeah. Yeah. keep it up. <laughs> That's how this dust storm came in, and now we're fighting the same struggle again. It's just the way it is. <clears throat> There's been several compliments on the street sweeping. Yeah, it's looking good. Uh, okay, the accessible parking issue. So at one point we were approached by both the RM and um, Cree Nation Travel Health about accessible parking. Council had asked to come up with a policy as it relates to how we're going to deal with accessible parking. And it was discussed that all requests would be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. But one of the conversations at the table was, is to ensure that when a, a request is submitted, that the town um, asks the applicant, and the applicant must prove that they've made every attempt to provide any kind of that uh, accessible parking on their own site and give reasons why that parking is not available on their property. So basically, if an accessible parking spot is approved, the town will arrange for the installation of the sign at the expense of the person making the request. So again, this will come in as a case-by-case -case basis, and it could be as much as um, we have a request coming up right after this where it's for a health facility. We had talked briefly, I can get into it, sorry, with the next one, about the difference between loading and accessibility parking. Yep, go ahead. Just so we do have um, Cree, Cree Nation Tribal Health. We went and looked in the area. They do have a parking lot on the side of their building, but if you're looking at Handy Bound, there's no way that that is going to go into that area to drop a patient off or to drop someone off. It's just it's too tight and they have parking on both sides. So a Handy Bound wouldn't access it. Even I was surprised with it. it there's no way it would, would do that. So I asked Sam, why wouldn't we just do a loading zone? And he said, when you put loading zone, it gives people the misconception all of a sudden you're going to have people that are Anybody. going to be um, delivering packages there now parking in that spot. So it won't be for the, I never thought of that. It wouldn't be yeah. for the reason it was designed. Sam had no issue with um, them applying for this property or for having a, par no, or a, a disability parking in front of the area. Uh, what I would do is make that as a condition and have a little chat with them to ensure that their employees are parking in their designated parking area. 
because right now a lot of the employees are parking on the street and there's businesses in that area that are affected by it. So there's so the only thing we have to, the only like I guess rules we have to go by are our own bylaw or policies and procedures that you you've got here in terms Correct. of okay. Because I and again I'm I'm for having accessible parking but I think a lot of places would have a very justifiable yep. reason for having this. Uh, it's just kind of my my fear of approving anything is just, I mean, everybody, Almost. everybody can have a... That's right. Yeah. Because, and especially with the new act coming in right now with accessibility, yeah. I think people are getting a little anxious and a little exciting thinking that they have to offer this. We can't. If you look at every business in town and wanted to offer even on one per street, you're looking at taking away a lot of parking spots. So again, this particular, that's why we decided on a case by case, because mm -hmm. in this particular case, it's with a medical background, right? That's why they're going there. Yeah, it's a health center. They're more out to get those people going there and coming yeah. from there, right? So if, um, just creation, so if you approve that for accessibility parking, right? Mm -hmm. um, who will Cree Nation police that? We'd have to police that. So, what would the vehicle need to identify it as an accessible parking? If it's vehicle? accessible parking, you usually you have that little um, the wheelchair the permit. The wheelchair yeah. thing. But then, if you do it wrong and you and you paint that <coughs> there as uh, with uh, the wheelchair or whatever. Then it becomes handicap parking, and then you get a problem of anybody parks there. Yeah, yeah, that's a handicap sticker. Two things. Yeah, no, they are, but they aren't. So yeah, how do you? I like, think they are. You would have to have it signed that this parking location, whatever, for Cree Nation child, child and family or tribal whatever health, is specifically for like the handy van or whatever. Okay. Handy van parking. Handy van parking. But it, no, I think it's broader than that is what we're talking for about. For a handy van yeah. only though. No. But like if you if you put like the the handicap logo there, anybody that has a sticker on it. That's right. That's right. So <laughs> where so they could park on the side of so the So we be going to home hardware or whoever, whatever. You know, so it's kind of a Well that's what but that's my point. Yeah. Is because it's not like we're dealing with a 18 mile road. Well, oh, I know. So, if, so then, how do you com how do you accommodate the handy van? But then the person that's coming up in their van who's in a wheelchair, sorry, we don't have a lot for you. I don't going know. to the same place. Going to the exact yeah. same place. So, wheelchair will this uh, will this spot be Cree Nation spot? That's I think what we're getting at. Yeah. So this will be Cree Nation spot for uh, accessibility. accessibility. Yeah. Put in the clinic. Does it just stay loading zone? Yeah. That's, That's right. What yeah. say? But the same thing happens there. If you watch when the clinic used to be there, and they would be bringing stuff to the uh, pharmacy yeah. or whatever, like guard one, whoever used to pull in and use it as a loading zone. Because that's exactly what signs say. That's why it's the, when in speaking with Santri, that's why he recommended not to have that. So the Cree, Cree Nation, uh, I'm not familiar with their operation. I'm assuming they're open 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. That's their general hours. So if we were to put signage up, could we specify that this is accessibility will be parking between 9 and 5, Monday to Friday, for Cree Nation? I've yeah. never heard of it actually being for a specific business, but we can look into it. Because they're applying for it, right? Yeah. So yeah. that would be my thoughts. So, okay, so let's just say that works. So then the vehicle will have a sticker or something on it that I would think it should. It, right? So then if I well, park there in error, right? They, would have, they could have something at their desk, they go in and get a tag from them, put it in their vehicle for the well, feel like a disability then, and are you going in and out of there, that's... But people may not even go inside, like I could be, for example, taking, I could have went and picked somebody up and I'm going yep. to drop them off and I need to park in front of there because they can't get inside from parking me parking 10 rows down. Yeah. And not so everybody takes a handy uh, To me, what yeah, you're looking you know for, though, is you're looking for... I could be taking my grandmother there. Okay, so, well then, so look, so, uh, I'm parking there, I'm not supposed to be there. I'm in, in the home hardware shop, right? Um, could, could we have an arrangement with one of the tow truck companies, or all the tow truck companies, that if somebody is occupying that spot during those hours, 
Cree Nation just calls the tow truck company and gets rid of it. I know some Rather than having, because they're going to call the town, yeah, right? Yeah. And then we're going to write a letter and it's going to yeah. take time and we're going to yada, yada, yada. Whereas if we put on the signage, tow away at forced, and they just call the tow truck and away it goes. I'll double check with Sam, but when we did try and deal with automatically towing in our community because there was only a few towing companies, they didn't want to do that. If you recall, yeah. there was a couple of them, yes. There was a, not that long ago actually, because we were having issues with parking just in our areas. Right. But if we if we don't have some enforcement mechanism, we're wasting everybody's time. Correct. Right. So, uh, but and, and like it, if you're in Winnipeg, or maybe even Brandon, I don't know, and you pull up to a place, and it says Toway Zone, Case Towing, like they name the company on there so that you know where to find it. Yeah. Where to find it? And they're not kidding. No, no. they don't get it. It's gone. <laughs> Like that's 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 in the big picture, but in our town it's becoming a big picture. Like we everybody wants access parking. So we have to sign it that way, is that it's a toy zone. And it and it's it's accessibility parking. So right. even if we give it to Cree Nation, that doesn't mean that Trevor will have the right to park there just because he's going into Cree Nation. Because he has no accessibility issues, right? right? We didn't create them a new private parking spot. Right. This is for a specific yeah. reason. Yeah. Right. It's back to what we have in front of yeah. the schools. So we and, have the and accessibility. Is, and is this more for the handyman, or is this just for well, anybody with who comes over in? Over time, people people. Not everybody needs a handyman. Yeah. People sure. know you can't okay. park in front of the clinic. It, it's just a learning curve that people will have to <clears> go through. <throat> hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. I, I, think I don't know what to put. I'm either. not sure either, but I think there needs to be a way that, that Swampy Cree, or Cree Nation, I should say, just picks up the phone and it's towed because that's our spot and nobody's here and like, what's it doing there? We can see if they'll try it again, but yeah, we did approach and, and a couple yeah. of the companies and they were interested. Wheelchair accessibility. Small town, sadly. Yeah. Did they mention to you what their biggest issue was? It was we so wanted them on a retainer to say, if you see this, just do it. And they said no. No, I mean, what the biggest issue is in terms of the types of, are they talking like the, the handy van type of stuff, or is it more the individuals at both? Is it everything? It was an example of why they couldn't park in the side area. Is because if you had vehicles at the handy van, they could pull in. Guys, one at a time, guys. Sure. So that was part of the problem is if it's not always the handy van, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that are like um, in some of the communities in the um, like in some of the outside communities, they have an actual little van. Yeah. It's not a handy van. It's yeah. just a little van. So that's where I'm kind of like, how do you necessarily say the only handy van parking or you can't say wheelchair. No, it's not necessarily a wheelchair. No, it, has to be. it, it could be a walker. It could be anything like it. That's what makes it a little more difficult. Okay. I'm not opposed to the idea, but I think we need to dig in a little bit more, right? And as well, we, we need, in my opinion, we need the, like, Cree Nation to be able to phone the tow truck company and get rid of it. Yeah. Because, like yeah. I said, what will end up happening, they'll send a letter to the town, that vehicle will no longer be there, we'll waste a bunch of time. <coughs> yep. Okay. So we'll dig in a bit more? Yeah, and mm -hmm. we're also looking at... Um, are we looking specific for Cree Nation, or are we looking? I think general? I think once we work this out, it'll apply. Okay. Right. Perfect. I think once we work this out, it'll apply. All right. And and just sorry to beat this here up, but is it if it's a I don't know if you're gonna ask this around or whatever. Is it a drop off pickup they want? Like to me, that's different. This if, if, if it's a drop a drop off pickup. So if I'm driving the uh, Sabatoyak van and I want to drop them off and pick them up. So I can drop them off and pull up, and then I can go park the van off the road, and then I can come back later and pick them up. That way then it services it everybody, right? Because everyone can do the drop-off pickup. But if it's if we put this as just uh, anybody who has accessible issues, we're not going to help anybody. We're just going to help one person yeah. for an hour and a half or whatever they are to get access to the building. Yeah, because you're kind of describing a loading zone. Yeah, but yeah, they right. asked for consider a loading zone or an accessibility zone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accessibility they asked for either. Yeah. yeah, for drop off, pick up, and all. And this is to service many elders and clients with mobility issues. Okay. So again, it doesn't necessarily mean it's okay. 
Okay. How do you own? Yeah, that could be okay. anything. Okay. So we'll, we'll dig it in a bit more and come back? Yep. Okay. Can we still approve the policy, though? Yeah. I believe the policy is basically saying individual, try and do what you can to... Case by case basis, yep. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, general oh, yeah. yeah. Because that, that's the intent. Okay. Right. Oh, we're finishing in three. Planning the Community Development Corporation. Review of the agreements. Uh, issue sheet. So I understand basically council is going to set up with some of the items they want brought forward for the agreement and then meet with the CDC to discuss the proposed changes prior to the changes being submitted. So yeah. when would you guys like to have all that information in and have a sit down with the CDC? Okay, so do we want to go through the agreement now, or do we? how do we want to handle the agreement portion? The stuff in red was the things that we spoke about last time, about what we'd like to see changed. Right. Uh, I'm not sure how you would word that in the agreement exactly, Jen, but... For the one to two years, mm -hmm. that's where I'm kind of stuck to. Yeah, a lot of times with boards, when they have two-year terms, the first time it's one year. And for some second, of them? For some of them, for half. Usually it's half and half, half or two, half or one, yeah. and then it's two there on after. So which one would be half? Which was what was council looking at for half? Uh, well, we've got a bunch that are going to be reappointed, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So point them as one year. Well, they so might be your twos, because the others might be coming upon their terms. So I'm not sure. Right? <laughs> We'd have to start beating that around a bit. Yeah. Because, oh, right, because some of them don't have no term model. Some of them don't have terms right now. Some of them don't have terms. Um, well, we can discuss that with the CDC as well, right? But I would think half and half. So does each individual group, <coughs> excuse me, for example, Chamber of Commerce, they would only appoint for one year at a time, but is there some other group who's part of the CDC who would appoint for two years? But then if... We don't have the same as two years. Then that's changing their agreement. Does that? Yeah, do you know I, what I'm saying? I or do, I'm but not I, being really clear. No, but okay. It, so like, um, like if the town of the pot said that Chamber of Commerce can have a one-year term, but Chamber of Commerce has that rep set up as a two-year term. Would that mean that the Chamber of Commerce, for example, would need to go back and change their bylaws because the town of the Palm wanted it to be a one-year term? That is that more this clear? Is what I'm just to say? Can I just say? Can I just say? First year, everybody's term would be a two-year term, but because they've already held that seat for a year, in a year theirs would come up, whereas somebody newly appointed would have two years, so they would run past by a year. That's not what I'm talking about. I, I get that. But that's, that's not what I'm saying. But you, you, you have a two-year appointment right now. But that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah okay, you have a two-year. You have a two-year appointment right now, right? Like this is the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce has a two-year appointment now. Sure. Right. So they stay with their two-year appointment, right? But Chamber of Commerce only appoints for one year. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. It's like they don't <coughs> they don't well, balance each other out. Well, the, so the, but we, it could be it doesn't the really matter. Yeah, the Chamber of Commerce bond is a two year term, and if you change board members within those two years, then that board member has six months or eighteen months. It would be basically how. It would be changed correctly. Yeah. Um, as well, we would have to because a lot there's seven or eight who have no term limits. Uh, and who don't really represent a uh, service club, per se, we would have to uh, just draw a line and say, you're two, and you're one, and then you're two. More or less. Yeah. Right. Easy peasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to figure it out later. So the, uh, the before we meet, or before we meet, I mean, we could have, like, most of this could be done, right? Like, there's, oh, only, yes, yes, there's yes, only a yes. couple of things, yeah. really, like the, you know, the life, the life ones, kind of, that needs to be one or two, and the, adding the UCN one, that's kind of an easy one. An extra one for us. An extra one for us. Which I've already uh, done, and I did send that agreement to Yeah, you. and then, uh, the, the, yeah, the clarification of the definition for taxpayer, 
what because we're talking whether you live in town or not, or you just own a business and pay taxes. Is that good enough? Because some people have businesses that aren't in their name, they're incorporated or whatever. So I don't know what we think on those on that one. Yeah, that one's a bit tricky, right? Clarify the definition of a taxpayer. So, um, so. I can live in Swan River and be on your CDC. I'm a taxpayer of Town of Paul. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's a business. That's, That's what right. that means. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we have the same issue for voting for council, too. So you no. can't, uh, you know, some people own a little block of land with nothing on it, but they live at the lake all year long and, and still can vote. So. But I guess it's. If the property's in yeah, their name. In their name. Not yeah. In Whereas sometimes it's yeah. in a business name. And if your business owner is from. Yeah. Flint Farm. I, I personally don't have a problem. I have more problem of, of an issue of people being able to vote and having a piece of land that's not, not developed and being able to vote versus this is a non, and you're not getting anything from this. And if someone's got their own secret agenda and they're going to spend it on the CDC, I think they got bigger issues. I, I think most of the people that are going to be want to be involved are, are there to help and be part of a, a volunteer organization so I don't really have a problem if they're whatever own a business in town they're paying taxes but it just hasn't happened to be in their name so um, let's just so if we uh, if we had somebody who wants to be on the CDC who doesn't live in town but owns a business would it be unreasonable to get elected because we don't we don't necessarily know anyone's personal holdings of the business right we, we don't know for sure that he is the business owner, but would it, so if, uh, if if Billy Smith wants to be on the CDC and he owns ABC Nuts and Bolts here, would it be unreasonable for ABC Nuts and Bolts to give us a letter saying that we want Billy to be our rep? Because it would have to come from an officer of the company. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. The president, the secretary, from an officer of the company who would have the wherewithal to commit the company to say, yes, he, he's our rep. Billy's, Billy's our guy. That isn't any different than what the Chamber and TPCRC does. Uh, same idea. Mm. Yeah. See, we, sometimes we get caught in the moment because we see the people that are in the position now that are doing good for your community, but you got if you're opening it up now, look at the bigger picture. Yeah. Because it... Uh, but at the end of the day, who votes on it anyway? That's why, you know, at the end of the day, we got... If anyone here has an issue with it, then you just vote no anyway, which we already have. Yeah, it would be good if we could tighten it up somehow. Uh, it's one that I think we need to get some thought to. Because it, it, is the, it is the Town of the Paws Community Development Corporation. So it would be... Uh, you want that focus to stay on the table. Well, you can't pole. just own it. You have to be an owner operator. Yeah, well, a lot that of them are corporate. Like a lot of them are incorporated, you know, <laughs> corporate structures, but that doesn't but necessarily. Sorry, it's, not under, the, sorry, it's it, not under the name, right? Yeah, it, it might not be, right? You really? may have yeah. a situation where the wife owns it and, and the husband does all the. He's the face of the company, but he doesn't own it. Mm -hmm. I got one of them. Yeah, right? So you're not really dealing with the, with <laughs> the owner. Her name, I wrote it. <laughs> well, if you look at it, four taxpayers of the town of Paw, that could end up being four people from the city of Flin Flon or whatever. Then you got three citizens at large within a 50 kilometer radius of the Paw who, again, don't necessarily have to pay taxes in our community. But, but I think just go back to council approvals. I know we want to sew it up, but I mean, look, look at, uh, look, look at I give examples of people all around town who own. A, a, a lot of stuff in town where they live in BC yeah. so that person could run for mayor yeah so they could run for mayor they could also go to the CDC as, as long as they own it personal personal as long as they own it not in a business name yeah, yeah. Business oh, yeah. oh for sure yeah yeah that, that is the one And that's the that's the difficulty with this, right? Because it you, it has to be about the paw, you know, the paw first.
Hmm. Any thoughts? Any suggestions? And we're talking about the tox portion, okay. right? The yeah. I need to think more. You could even say that for taxpayers of the town of Paul, you could say two residential taxpayers of the town of Paul. That's what it used to be. It was residential. And then you could do two residential taxpayers and then just two, two. taxpayers where it could be business. Did it used to be residential tax. I think at one point they had where it was separated a so hundred times. times. Yeah. So sorry. why did that change occur? Because I think when this was redone, there was very specific people yeah. they had in mind. So that's why it was designed very specific to the people that were in mind. Okay, I like that way. So then every time somebody new comes on, this needs to be reviewed. No. So no. No. Did it change? No. 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 It was yeah. somebody that. Like somebody new on the CDC? Yes. No. The CDC should be recruiting board members that are consistent with the bylaw. Okay. Yeah. I think the way Jan said it kind of makes sense. Yeah. In that two of them have to be residential taxpayers, and two can be taxpayers, just they taxpayers. Can be residential commercial. Like they could be, however. Because your interest is more than just uh, development like that here. It could be residential development where some it of those residential people would have like a very good impact on this. Right. Yeah, but we're, all, we're also, too, you know, uh, looking for people that have business experience that a lot of the stuff that, you know, we don't have experience on. So the guy who owns a business in the town who the company is incorporated, it's not on his name, who's paid, pays a lot more taxes. It could be a real big business. We can't take that person off. But by the way she's worded it, you can take two that would give you both. And it would guarantee you that you've got at least two spots that are residential taxpayers. Then the other two spots are either residential but, but, and or... But, but the way it is worded now, what's, what's the big deal? We still have, approve. We, the way we, it's we, worded right now, you could have all four of them being business owners. What's, well, what's all about? But at the end no, of the day, we decide. No residential. But we decide anyway. You are right. We do decide at this table. We, we yeah. decide anyway. All the names yes. Yeah. Right? But you have to have grounds in here to say no. It's uh, certainly something that... Because like to me, who do you want? A residential person or someone with business? Background. But do you always want someone with a business background that could maybe watch for their own competitiveness and not want that business in town now? Well, I mean, if that's that the can case, happen anywhere, right? Well, that well, I mean, if that's the case, I mean, geez, just you know, can the whole thing then? Because I mean, that's that's the person who wants to get on there. I mean, and, exactly. and they're allowed, and allowed, and they're allowed to run that agenda. Then everybody then would be, everybody would be, we would be producing nothing. Is that a motion you're making? Yeah. <laughs> no. I understand. We, we we could nitpick this to death. <coughs> At the end of the day, council decides who's on it. Like you know, and as I said, we denied one already because we we didn't like whatever the issue that was there, and the, so we can deny other ones that come in. So again, why don't we just look at it on a case by case basis? This allows us to have uh, residential or business. Like it, it allows for both, right? And we decide. And that is correct. Council could turn around and say, no, we yeah. want all four residential, or we want yeah. two residential, Cause, whatever. Because right? the next thing we'll be in here saying, geez, we'd be nice to have a bulb on there, but we don't have the extra spot. We should go and have it we'll open it up to. But to sadly, that's how this came about, was yeah. because there was five bobs, and these didn't comply with what we had in place. So yeah. that's why it came to this point. Yeah. So what are we, we doing? Do we have any residential taxpayers on that right now? Uh, I don't think no. so. No. So who's on there right now? Oh. Did you Yeah, it'll be in the last surgeon. Well, I think we can. No, I don't think it will. I know exactly what it says. Town, RM. Chamber of Commerce, TPCRC, and then four uh, taxpayers, taxpayers. Four taxpayers, and three citizens at large, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So the three citizens at large are um, McConnell, 
Or is she a taxpayer? And Gimp. And She's a taxpayer. Okay, got gentle. Oh yeah, wait for that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out each. And then those were the dates they were oh, okay. not so, All right. So the town rep now is on, right? Rod is the RM rep. Chamber of Commerce is Linda. And TPCRC is Doug. Okay, so taxpayers, we... Is Darcy... Okay, well Darcy's on there, but I don't think Darcy should be, because... He's going to be, he's going to be removed. I could have sworn that there was, there was something, I know it was talked about it at some point in time before I was even had anything to do with the CDC about him. Because he's not even living here. N no, there was some, I, I, I don't even. He would have I, missed too many meetings. He's anyway. living somewhere else or something. Someone yeah. said they were no, sending him a letter. Like replaced or anything. Yeah, no. but he was, had, had no, he sent regrets like his, he was done. There was one of five meetings so, I think, that yeah, he was able to attend. Yeah, and he town. was, I think he said that he was done, but. Okay, yeah. so uh, so we've got Andre for the town, uh, Rod for the RM, Linda Marcus, Chamber of Commerce, and Linda, she lives in the RM, right? I think, yeah. Uh, Doug, okay, well, but Doug will be replaced by uh, Roland. Roland. Roland and that's coming up next on the agenda. Okay, so Roland. Um, and Roland lives. Uh, Patrick. Er, he lives in in town. Town. Is he in town? He's yeah. renting in town. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Darcy Monroe, who we think is going to be gone. Okay. Now these are the taxpayers. Uh, Jerome Connedy. Lake. 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 So we're assuming he's paying taxes through funky threads. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Murray Hocus at the lake, but Twin Motors. Uh, Kent Cook at the lake, but Wells Island. Or Wells Island, Island, I mean. Yeah. Uh, but he owns Cook and Cook in town, pays business. What is that? Do they own? Does he own the building? I don't know if he does personally, but it might be business. the Cook and Cook business owns it. Does Cook and Cook business own it? I'm pretty sure they did. Okay. Anyway, this that's one too is questionable. I think it's the wife yeah. that owns it. Right. Okay. All right, and then uh, citizens at large, we've got Kathy McConical. I, I, I have no idea where Kathy is. She lives down by you, doesn't she, Jim? Yeah, she lives in Metro. Metro. Dufferin. Dufferin. Okay. Uh, Rob Penner's out at Rolls Island. And Alan Gibb is on uh, Guy. Guy. Okay, so we've got one. So you've got two people who live in town at citizens at large. We have none who live in town as taxpayers, um, and we have, uh, well, the town rep and Roland LaSalle. So the town has one, two, three, four confirmed taxpayers who are on the, who are on the CDC, and then Darcy while well, he's missing, and then we have whatever the ownership structure is for Funky Twin and Cook and Cook. And so the RM has uh, one, two, three, and then the lake has three, and the town has one, two, three, four for the town. So even right now, right, even right now, it, it's not like the uh, town of La Paz has the big stick, right, because we've got everybody else there. But I don't. But I, I don't. I don't get. Like, but like this. This whole CDC thing is, like, you know, it, it's. I get it. It's for the town. But I mean, people are got businesses in town. I mean, do we need to have? So do we need to have eight people that live, and uh, I mean, we can do this argument for everything. We can't go for council if you, if you don't your primary residence is and you know you're living in town where you live at the lake. So I go to the lake for the summer, so should I not be on council because I go to the lake for the summer? Like this is I don't think I don't think it's coming no, down to that. I think it's just that coming that down to the structure. We want to just make sure that the structure of it's all set up. I, I don't think it's necessarily that detailed, Trevor. But it is. We just finished adding up the numbers about who lives in town and who doesn't. So if we if it wasn't that, then why did we just do that? 
right? Like I, that's just all I'm seeing is we're talking about our taxes here, the taxes in, in terms of whether you're a taxpayer in town or not. I'm just saying we leave it the way it is. So I mean, we talk about the CDC forever, and there's a lot of people that have said have said very little about it. Can we just like I guess make a decision? as to what we're going to do rather than talking and talking, the same two or three people talking about this to death and just vote on it and move on. Yeah, so um, that's a good point, right? Uh, for me, and it's no secret, right? My concern about the CDC is it's been too regional <coughs> an approach as opposed to the town of the Paw, because it is the economic engine for the town of the Paw, not for the region of the Paw. And that's been my concern right since day one. And then when you, and these are all good people, I'm not criticizing them at all, but when you look at the makeup of the board, clearly you can see, you can understand why it's a regional board because these are all regional people. They're not uh, all just in town with a pop. And that, for me, that's a thing, right? I, I want a CDC that's going to be focused on the town of the pop. But uh, Andre now will be the rep and uh, I'm sure he will do accordingly. Um, as far as the taxpayer portion goes, it sounds like we're going to have one empty spot by by taking it for sure. If we make the changes, right, if we add in the other spots, so there will be one more town rep, is what we're talking? Yep. One more town rep, and then one for UCN. Correct. Correct. Okay. So uh, do we need to define the taxpayer one more, or do we leave it as is? I think maybe we can just leave it as is, because I, I think the numbers are starting to balance. Are they not? Uh, and, 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 and the thing of it is, if anybody of the four, or anybody of the taxpayer part there, leaves and they bring a new person on like Trevor says, then we decide anyway, right? Right. Right? You want to increase the balance? What do you make three town reps? Why do you put four town reps? Well, no, it's not where we're going, Trevor. No, but no, well, that's where I'm going. Yeah, I know uh, that's where I'm saying, because I, I want to put it to bed. So if it's about numbers and where people are living, then add four town reps and then me, Bill, Gary, Larry, or whatever, add us all on. And then we've got uh, more in town. I think we've got it now as to where it is. And then from here, if we leave it the way it is right now, and then we, as people come and go or whatever, we do with it after. And who it, sits here too? It's, it's also set up the way for the recommendations that they want as well. So I, I don't see that the CDC is going to, they're not going to walk against no. any of this because this is the makeup that they'd like to see happen as well. We present it to them with the meeting and whatever. Okay, so then are we saying, so because even I'm confused, yeah. are we saying we're leaving the taxpayer definition as is? That's the main concern right now. You guys? I guess so. I we think we so. have a final say on who that person is. I guess we can. Leave that says. Leave that says. Carrie? Yeah, yeah, we can leave it as is because the way that the structure is now, there are people who are paying residential taxes to a town of the park. Okay. The bylaw, their bylaws are also set up that you need to live within 50 kilometers. Okay. So if somebody, you know, doesn't fit that, then that's just, yeah. Okay, so the taxpayer ones we're leaving as is. Everybody's in favor of that? We've got a consensus? Okay. Uh, the UCN rep one, town of the paw. Um, and the two-year terms. Yeah. Okay. So, can you word an agreement? Yeah. And nothing else in the agreement is changing. I don't. Not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. Nothing else. Okay. So 
overall agreement. She went to the bathroom. The, 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 the overall agreement. I thought we, used, if we, I thought you guys were opening the agreement, you were going through the whole thing. When I read well, the, <laughs> sorry, when I read the agreement, wasn't there a portion where they had already changed it to eliminate the CRC seat in with the CDC? No, that's and they pointed it to the UCN. That's been changed. That's been changed. It's been changed yeah. again, Bob. Yeah, that did. Okay. That that wasn't their call to do. It, because the agreement is ours. Right? Okay. So, let's see, the <coughs> renewal clerk is still there. <coughs> so make changes and yeah. meet when? Yeah. Uh, well, so it should be on our next committee of the whole. We'll, yeah. we'll see the agreement and then we'll select the meeting in case there's anything else that anybody wants to address. There's not, is there anything else anyone wants to address? Any? No? No problem. Okay. So. The appointment of board member stuff, uh, you know, really once we uh, finalize the agreement. Put on hold until the agreement is revised and done with this one. Right. Yeah. Uh, question there, just for clarification. Um, so their next meeting coming up, I don't attend or I do attend? Uh, you would be a guest. Okay. No, no, I'm just, just wondering because there's uh, they sent me emails to go, so I don't want to go at all if it's going to cause any yeah. issues and, yeah, you and you guess. make sure everybody knows that I'll, I was planning on going. They need to be a guest until they're appointed. Yeah, yeah. like really, yeah. Uh, technically yeah. speaking, they don't. Yeah, they're if you're not appointed, then now. you're a guest. Okay. Right? Because Linda's not on there right now, Doug's not on there right now, Darcy well, is probably not going to come back. Um, Trevor's not on there. Yeah. Who else was there? Anybody that we Roland. Uh, I get Roland. Roland. Uh, Roland. Uh, I don't. I don't know what was going on. Rob, have Rob is a citizen at large. So, so you'd have Alan Gibb, Rob Penner, Kathy, Rod Andre, Kent Murray. Yeah, you'd have a. Yeah. Okay. Because they were all ones that didn't have term positions. They didn't have term limits. Okay. Okie dokie. Uh, finance and admin, AMM visit. This is something AMM comes up each uh, summer and meets with the northern districts. The executive and the directors all get together. And it's an awesome opportunity to come up and tell us a lot of the new programs that are coming out, etc. It'll probably be your last time for meeting uh, Mr. Massey, who is retiring. Sure. So, yeah. So, this will be on July 31st at 6 p.m. if you ever can make it. June Districts. So, June District is June 20th in Flin Flon. We have one of our own councillor ward running for uh, the Northern District member. Um, the letters have been sent out to all the northern municipalities requesting support. So we would require a resolution to approve. However, we need to register council members as soon as possible. I would recommend if we have one of our own councillors that are running um, to be a northern district rep, that we have as many as possible go. I'll definitely be going. I have a voting right to. Yeah, can, can we look into whether or not um, I can make arrangements to do a pre-vote or if there's something that it's I you can have to be do, there. you have to be in attendance? That's your trip. I won't be in attendance. My apologies. I would vote for you, Bill. That's so just a northern you district. You're, 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 you're a very busy person. You're always on the call. It's us north won't be in town. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. The RM goes with um, Dauphin area. Yeah. They do more central because they're farming interest. But we're north. Okay. What time of day is it? It's an all day. It's an all day. You can't wait. Uh, you know what, I'm going to try. I, uh, okay. I, got, I haven't used any of my days. I get four when's, days. When's Graf? Uh, Do you know when I'm going to be saying So I should have a... It's hard to pick those days, isn't it? It's hard to pick the days, so give one to you, Bill. So <laughs> you're going home. Uh, I hear that all the I hear that all the way at my house. Uh, when am I going to do my day? I'd imagine the resolution for six or seven. 
I would just do a resolution to approve all counsel and myself, and then we talk to Andre, we talk to Chad. Bill, you're definite go, I would yep. hope, as soon as you're running. Uh, and I would keep that in mind for any grad requests that might come in. You're going to miss, right? How about yourself, Larry? You're going to go. You're going to go. Uh, when is that? Sorry? It's the 20th. I think it's 20th, like a Thursday June. of June. It is a Tuesday. Yeah, I'll be there. Are the district I'll meetings, find a way. did they, um, do they vary from town to town yep. each year? Well, okay. Jennifer puts it on the calendar. Yeah, yeah I'll put it on the calendar. Are they going to work in the same place? No, we've posted it before, actually. In advantage. Okay. They've had them in Churchill. Okay. Yeah, I know. So getting back to the, to the, uh, July meeting that is being held where? Sure. Or did I miss it? Here. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The tariff trial. Right. Okay. The all that presentation. Sorry, give me one sec. Do you guys want to look at a lunch meeting? This won't take long. How or do you want to do it before sorry? committee of the whole? How much time? Was that Larry? Where are we? We're on uh, uh, four all three. meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, how half much time does he need? Half an hour to an hour, yeah. We talked about this earlier. So why don't we do it before council on the 27th? Say at 5 or something? I think, I unfortunately think that was the one week they weren't available. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I will set it up if it works. I'll let everyone know. I'll check tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure they had a whole bunch of other presentations that one week. Oh, the whole, okay, that yeah, because we've got two other meetings that week. And yeah. If, yeah. If any one of those evenings at 5 would work, that okay. would sure be nice. And then if that doesn't work, do you want us to move it to another committee of the whole before, yeah. or do you want us to do a new no, one? let's do it another before. Noon's tough. Good. Uh, I'm not in town the 29th. Uh, oh, I May? think I need to be here, though, don't I? Plus yeah, clock. budgets. Calling in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Payroll and accounts. Uh, we would require a resolution to approve pay period 6, the amount of 103, 518, 68, general checks of 378, 114, 66, EFTs of 58, 148, 22, for a total of 539, 781, 56. Um, checks in conflict would be 22893 in the amount of $96.04 cents to Northern Building. One of our biggest ones was 191,218, and that was to AMM Trading Company, and that's for our insurances, fuel. Our insurance is not cheap when you're looking at all our buildings and equipment and stuff. Yeah, and the rest the are just our regular. Pardon me? It's all the parks yep. as well. Um, Grass River Heating and Cooling. I see a check there for 5500 That would be for your... I know Grass River was here doing our pool thingy. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it is. Is the pool fixed? Yep. It's my understanding is it's working. Really? And he had made some other recommendations to... Uh, do a little more work on it. Cool. So the humidity problems are under control? That's what I was told. Nice. Wow. And how do, what, what do we gauge that by? I would have to ask, have to ask Chris that okay. because I called and made sure because it was brought up at our last meeting. Yeah. And I called to make sure and... Because the fans are in there which are making a big difference. Yes. Yeah. But I, I've been in there for the last three weeks and it's... It's pretty humid in there, but <coughs> I, you know, I don't, other than the last three or four weeks, I haven't been in there tons. But I, I just kind of wondering what they go by because there must be some sort of an instrument they look at to. What's our measurement? Approve, right? Yeah, yeah, just other than it runs. Okay, I will ask the question. Okay. What Suez Water Technologies? Um, plant operation chemical. Oh, chemical? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trev's Electric, 18989 I wonder if that was for his, yeah, the lights at the town garage. That was the retrofit that we were waiting for the money. If you recall, it was brought up about hydro oh, yeah, that we yeah. didn't complete. Yeah. That's his final billing, finally. So. Then we can submit. Now we can oh, submit that. Okay, so we'll get most of that back. Some, not most. Okay, and that's okay. What 
one of the big ones you got. Uh, Mid Continental Pump. That was probably our big. Uh, At Mid Continental, that would be uh, Deep Well. Deep Well. North of, north of 53. North of 53. Yes, sir. That's a bunch of parts. Jet socket. Fans. Yeah, and there's a fans. whole bunch of stuff in there. Like ceiling fans. My goodness. There's yeah, hose fans. clamps. Throw apart, yep. Any more questions on that, folks? So the resolution coming forward next meeting? All right. Good. Emergency manage, emergency plan EMO. So um, we had our EMO person that made a presentation to council and outlined responsibilities and duties. Um, that person also updated our emergency plan as it relates to contact numbers and people. So we would require a resolution approving our plan as amended and updated, and then that's to be sent to the province. Questions? You're comfortable with it? Ready to go? We basically drafted it in the first place to meet EMO requirements, so okay. we just need to go through every year and make sure that items are updated, equipment lists were updated, that kind of stuff. And all that's happened? Yep. Okay. Yep. National Indigenous Peoples Day celebrations. So that celebration will be held on January 21st. There was a request if anybody wanted to sit. Maybe I'm June. sorry, June. My apologies, January. <laughs> Jeez. Long night. That's not even eight. <laughs> so they're asking if anybody would like to be on the planning committee. Um, and they would also like to have use of Devon Park for their event. Anybody, like, I, I, I don't have time to sit on another committee right now, not this time of year. Well, keeping in mind, yeah. the day before is also your AMM. Yeah. And but, I'm not here, yeah. unfortunately. So, I, would, I don't know if I would be able to make it to would sit on a planning committee and then not be able to follow through when the yeah. actual event happens. That doesn't <clears throat> make sense. I would have so, offered to help out yeah. with stuff, but I'm not here the 21st yeah. either. Okay, so I don't know if anybody can sit on the. Okay, so we're fine there with uh, yep. Devon Park. Take care of it. So resolution to approve Devon yep. Park. Yeah. Yep. And, and you're done. And I don't know if we need a resolution. Do we? The policy doesn't say. No, we can probably just write the letter and say the as letter. long as you're you're clean it up and the liabilities yep. at yours. Yep. Sorry. No, I think I messed up by putting a resolution. Yeah. Not much quicker. Uh, the NBCA yearbook. In the past, I used to have $500 that I had in a budget to permit this type of thing. Um, we didn't do that in this year's 2019 budget. How do we deal with these kind of requests moving forward when it's an actual advertisement fee? Sometimes we'd send it over to Destination Marketing but when it comes to actually advertising, but this is the school. Is there going to be a yearbook this year? Is there a yearbook? Yeah, there are. Yeah. 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 We do already provide um, bursaries to the schools. I guess we're okay. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I think we should do something, right? It's, it's a yearbook. It's, it'll become a historical document. It's good to know that the town supports the school. So, uh, you know, I, I think we should do something. So if it's a can I have my five hundred dollars back and I can do this stuff without coming to you guys every time and then when my five hundred dollars is over I just no because how else are we going to get twenty five thousand now? <laughs> <laughs> it was that's like the uh, only thing I'd ever used was the odd time for something like this and I would use it for uh, what was the road runners yes what it was uh, red nose red nose operation red nose one hundred dollars this is how we feel important when we make these big decisions. <laughs> well, put a big smiley face when he's a council approves. 
Okay, well, I think we should do it. What do you, you guys, what do you no, think? I think we should do it. Okay. okay, quarter page, the, the $50 for a quarter page. Sure. Yeah? You, oh, Bill's giving me a thumbs up. What does that mean? Half page. Half page. Half page? That's what I was thinking. 100 bucks, half page. Half page, I don't know. And where would we take this money from? Your account, because you wouldn't give me any. So we take it out of that. <laughs> <laughs> that little bit that the mayor's account has in it? I'm sure we can find it somewhere. Okay, so a resolution. $100. To support, $100. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see that grant. We should, I still say, put, and I asked last meeting, we should put something into grants to organizations, even if it does come back to council, just so we have a little bit of money if things like these come up. So we, what would you have to do, make a resolution for that? Well, it should be in budget. It should be in it budget. Should be in it should budget? be in budget. Oh. But for next year's budget. Okay. Right. So this year we'll just wing it. We'll wing it as we go. Right. Okay. This year you get to feel important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, new business next meeting. I, I had a couple things yeah. I wanted to get on there. Communications policy to bring forward. Yep. And invite um, the municipal service officer to meet with council just to discuss, like to have an informal conversation about stuff. So with that, we have to pass a resolution to invite him, and as long as we invite him, he'll come up and, and meet with us. These are the people that we as admin call when there's provincial rules that we want to ensure that we're following. So I think it'd be great for you guys to have the opportunity to meet with them. Yeah. And we need to know when Carrie's going to be away or anyone else is going to be away over the summer. Because we're not sure when he would come, but it's important that all of council is out. Okay. I will let you know. Okay, so uh, resolution next meeting? Will it be put on for put discussion? Put on for discussion? Yeah. There you go. All right. Anything else you guys want on for the next meeting? Any, any updates you can provide would be good. I don't know what updates we're waiting for. I feel like there's something. Um, what we got? We got Dylan back. We got... There's one report yet we're still missing, right? We got Dylan back, we got the department one. I'm hoping Sam can provide, Sam and Chris could provide an update. Anything in particular? Oh, in regards to um, what water stewardship is going to say. Not stewardship. Water, water services. Water services. Water water services. Water services. Yeah. Hopefully we'll hear back from them. In another couple weeks. Oh, as well, if yeah. you have heard anything, although we just told him the right letters in here. He was just going to talk to anybody about the dump stuff or no? I sent those letters out. Okay, but yeah. we weren't doing any other, any other account. So um, it does take a while, I'm sure. It's uh, CFM. FCM? FCM. What do I think about that? Something about applying for money. You're doing gas tax. The energy upgrade one? And, uh, no, better, better lives. They're going to double the, the uh, it's about asking for money between, here it is, funding your municipality projects with FCM. Community initiatives across the country are improving the quality of air, water, land, um, with funding from FCM, general municipal Green Municipal Fund, Canada municipalities can receive loans of five to ten million can, uh, combined with grants for capital projects related to energy efficiency or recovery, water quality or cons uh, conservation and more. The next deadline to apply is August 1st. For loans? Yeah. Loans, loans or grants? Yeah. Loans grants. And grants. Well, you, read, you read it, it said loans combined. Can, yeah. re can receive loans of five to ten million combined with grants for capital projects. So basically, instead of us going to the province and asking them to be our loans person when it comes to adventure, they're offering the same. Yeah. Because usually, most of our projects, without the other funding, like without the provincial or federal grant, that's why we don't continue with our projects, because mm -hmm. it's very difficult to afford them all at once. Well, Granted, maybe this is something that would work with your 
discussion of the road improvement to have up to 400,000 a year too. It's a, just a thought. I just read it today anyway. So. Oh, no, we're just <coughs> I was looking at the RM financial plan today. They leased their grader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought they owned it. They leased it. Yeah. So maybe Graham could keep that in mind when he's beating me up next time. <laughs> <laughs> I think council was very clear on saying we're interested in looking at leasing moving yeah. forward. Makes so much sense in so many ways. Anything else? Not for me. Not yet. Okay. Paid vacation. What's that? Are we getting a paid vacation somewhere? Am I? Are we? Yes. No, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I ask a question with a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have one item for in camera. So somebody needs to move us. Let's pass the motion. Somebody want to item I'm here by moving. I don't the have it completely I memorized. I forgot to add the camera it. on here. Onto this agenda. If you go into other, go into last week's. The last week's oh, schedule. okay. Yeah, just Where is that? Yeah, it's, 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 it's on there. Yeah. It's on there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it uh, be resolved that we now move ourselves in the in-camera portion of the community of the whole with Mayor Jakes and the Chair to discuss matters requiring our attention.